Welcome back to the second video. So on this video we're going to get started actually creating some of the layout for the main screen of my remote. Now this is just a single room so I can fit almost everything I need on a single screen and that's kind of the idea to get rid of all these extra remotes that we have laying around. Now one of the great things about home remote is that you can customize just about everything about it. Uh, one thing we did not like about our Control 4 system was that it really wasn't designed to handle the built-in apps on our TV. Our Vizio has built-in Netflix and Amazon, uh, as well as some other like YouTube and stuff like that. Uh, but we really just like using the Netflix app uh, that's built into the TV, whereas most people, especially Control 4 users, typically have an Apple TV, which Control 4 does have a great integration with, uh, but there's just too many of these uh, off-the-shelf TV apps to, for Control 4 to have a good integration with. Um, so this was a great solution for us to solve that problem. Control 4, unfortunately, uh, they just don't have the buttons on this remote necessary uh, to do the controls that we need. Uh, whereas, obviously, the TV remote came with the buttons and a keyboard as well. Uh, we'll get to the keyboard much later in the video series. Uh, so to get started, I, I like to start with the visual side. You can also start with the device side and do some of the back end work first, but I like to see progress immediately, be able to sync it to my phone, be able to start playing with the layout, uh, start thinking about, uh, you know, I'm right handed, so I'm going to want my most used controls kind of on the right hand side, quick access, uh, whereas everybody's going to be a little different there. So to start in the designer on our YouTube home remote, uh, we're going to start with a new page, uh, page group that is, sorry. Uh, and for the main page group, we're going to change its name just to main page. Uh, there's no need to get complicated with it here. Uh, and then within that page group, uh, it's already created one page for us. Uh, if we create multiple pages, we'll see extra tabs and we'll get into that at later time. Right now, page zero is fine. So to start, I created a layout to mimic the one I did. Now, I just used Excel, uh, just quick and easy. Uh, you don't have to get super graphically complicated or whatever. Uh, later on, this is going to be much more visually appealing. Um, just to give you a quick preview, it's probably going to look something more like this. Um, so in order to create sort of the backbone for all those buttons that I have on there, we're going to need some grids. So to access the controls, it's at this tab at the top of the application. Uh, grids uh, are really going to be probably the main thing that people are going to use. Now it gives you one initially inside the page. You can use that. Um, I actually like to create a grid within the grid. So to create our first grid, we're going to click on the grid that's existing, the grid at the top, and then we're going to draw one inside of it. You can see that it nests that grid within the first one. And uh, you're going to see this nesting stuff happen a lot. Uh, so in our example here, we know we're going to need four, count them four columns and three rows. The way that we create those over here is in column definitions. Uh, we're going to click plus to create one, two, three, four columns. You can see them show up in blue over on my left. There's no real sense in creating names and types and so on and so forth for these right now uh, for the properties. Uh, we're going to leave all the width as the same. Uh, we'll be modifying that in case you're curious here in just a few minutes. For row definition, we're going to create three rows the same way, one, two, three. And now we have our grid portioned out how we want it. Now we just need to size it and put it right where we want it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of these margins that it's drawn. You can see it's put them out to about 20 decimal place, places exactly as I drew them here. I'm going to get rid of those and reset to default. By the way, anything here on the right hand side that's black squared uh, is something that's not the default, meaning you've edited it. So if you're looking for a, a, a mistake or something like that, something maybe that's not working as you'd expect, uh, go through this and make sure that the settings that you think you've changed are the ones that you've actually changed. I'm going to reset this back to default, zeros all around. Now for the width, I want to make sure that this is set on NAN. NAN is short code for uh, always the maximum or maximum stretch in this case. So what that means is since my wife and I's phone uh, she has an iOS device, like an iPhone 7 or 8 or whatever they're up to now. Uh, mine is an, a, a Galaxy 
uh, S6 active. The screen sizes are very similar, but they're not identical. So the aspect ratios are not identical, which means uh, something that might be taking up the entire left to right screen size on her phone might not be the same on my phone or vice versa. So it's a good idea in your design to make sure that you're stretching things out to the maximum dimensions as much as possible, especially if you plan on using it on multiple devices. So here I want to make sure that my width takes up the full amount of the phone and I'm only going to edit the height here. I'm going to change it to about 150 pixels. That looks pretty good to me. So the next step, uh, actually we're going we're to change that real quick just to 140, a little bit smaller. Uh, in case you see me click off something or see it take effect, I'm hitting tab on my keyboard, uh, which basically just locks in whatever value I've entered over here in the properties window. Uh, the next step is that I want this pinned up to the top. Pretty simple there, vertical alignment, and we're going to choose the top. Now the next section here is our control. Um, I've got up, down, left, center, right, etc. just like on the remote. I do want this to kind of be on the inside of the remote, not all the way to the edges on my phone. That would make it really difficult for my thumb to navigate them easily. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I could use padding to sort of uh, narrow up that control group, but instead I'm going to actually just cheat and add an extra unused column on the right and the left. So in this example, I'm actually going to create five columns and three rows to create this control group, knowing right off the bat that I'm never going to use the far left or the far right. It's just for spacing uh, because I hate padding so much. So to create another grid, I'm going to click back up here on our first grid, click on grid at the top so it's highlighted, and I'm going to draw my grid. Now, you'll see a mistake I'm about to make. I'm going to click to start drawing my grid within the first grid. And what it's going to do is nest this grid in my first one. I know we're getting a little insurrection here. Uh, this is not what I want. I don't want this grid to be a child of my parent grid up here. I want it to be in line with this. And the easiest way to do that is just to undo that grid I just created. And this time when I start drawing my new grid, I'm going to start drawing it in the area of the parent, right? Not in the top where an existing grid is already sitting. So in this grid, I'm going to do as before and create my five columns and my three rows. Three rows. They're all going to be spaced evenly. I do want this to stretch horizontally just like before. Um, and we're going to take off these uh, annoying margins. So you can see right now it's pinned to the middle. I'm going to pin it instead to the center. Uh, we're going to assume that's sort of where I want it. We can fine tune things later. Uh, and it doesn't need to be quite as big as the other one. Uh, the other one's height was 150. This one's probably going to be uh, maybe more like 100. So we'll put that like that. And the last step is the grid for the bottom, which I'm going to create just like I did the others. Uh, this one is only going to be two things, a volume slider and a mute toggle button. Uh, so in this case, I only need two columns like this, but I want one of the columns to be significantly larger than the other. Now I can do this a number of ways. I could create much more columns in here like this, and then I could use the stretch function to make the column or make the slider uh, stretch across those four columns, or I could just make this first column four times larger than the last column, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, so I'm going to get rid of these extra ones I need. And then I'm going to go and click on the actual column definition for this first column. The width here, I'm going to change this to four times. And what that means is four times, or four times the asterisk. And the one with the asterisk is the second one. So I'm just going to take a look at that. Four and asterisk. So now the first column should be four times bigger than the second column. Now sometimes you'll notice that the grid didn't change size how I would expect. Um, sometimes you just have to click off of it and click it back on. It's a little bug in there, I know. Uh, but now you can see that the first column much larger than the second column and we only bothered making two and we only needed just uh, one row which we will go ahead and create discreetly. One row. 
Uh, so we're back to the margins again, resetting those. And we do want it pinned to the bottom, but I certainly don't want it 64. We want it maybe more like uh, 25, for example. That looks pretty good, down by you know where your fingertips hit. So in order to see what we've created so far, it's a little difficult because there's nothing inside, but basically you could cr click on these grids. And you can see there's going to be some overlap on that one. We'll probably need to move this one down. There's a number of ways we can do that. Uh, and then this grid down here at the bottom. So the next step is actually to just add some buttons. And I used to, I like to use text buttons where I can uh, just as placeholders to figure things out. Clicking on the button, the text button button, and then drawing one inside that first grid square. A uh, good rule of thumb is to make sure that you're naming all of this stuff. So, uh, for example, otherwise you're going to end up with 100 buttons down the left-hand side. It's going to be really hard to diagnose and troubleshoot where problems are if you have to hunt and peck. So for this first button is an on-off uh, button. I'm going to label it on-off and hit tab to confirm. You can see that it ended up with on-off over here on the left-hand side. Now, it's a text button. I'm going to need the text property, which is under common. The text here is going to be on off. Again, tab to confirm. You can see that the button is now labeled. Again, I'm going to get rid of my margins. And now that it fills that entire hole of this. Now, we could cre keep creating buttons like this, but especially if you take your first button and you go through it and, and modify the appearance, uh, you can modify the text, the size, the color, uh, the font, all those kind of things, bold, italic, etc. And then once you've got everything exactly how you want it, rather than recreating those elements in every single button, you can copy and paste uh, the existing button. So we're just going to copy and paste this button. I could do that with keyboard shortcuts to control C and B. Now it went ahead and renamed it for me since it knows there can't be a duplicate. I happen to know that this next button needs to be named Netflix. And the text is also going to say Netflix. Now, you can see that it kept it in that first box because I didn't actually draw it in the second. And the way that these columns and rows are segregated is it's always going to start counting at zero. So this first column is zero, one, two, three. The rows is zero, one, two. So right now, both of our buttons are in column zero, row zero. I want this button to move over to column one and stay in row zero. That is located down on the layout, grid.column. Changing this zero to a one, tab to confirm will move that Netflix button over one spot. If I wanted to move it down, for example, I could move it just like that using the row button to move it back up. Or for example, if I wanted to stretch this control across these two, I would change the column span from one column worth to two columns worth, and you can see now it's centered above those. And we're gonna undo that control change. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and create a couple more buttons here. I know I've got a button for Amazon. And that's gonna be in control group two. And then I've got one for Cody. and that's gonna be in control column three. So now I've got my first buttons. Looks like I've got some more to add um, in this one control group. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I've gone ahead and created those buttons just to save us some time. Uh, now the next challenge we have is that the second grid overlaps on this first grid somewhat. We don't want that to happen. There's a few ways to fix this. In this example, just to keep things easy, I'm just going to use the margins uh, to move this down a bit from the center. Uh, now, these four zeros, this is left, up, right, and down. And I actually want to move the margin on this top section, so I'm going to be editing this second zero in the sequence. And I'm probably going to need to move it down about 20 or 30 pixels width. We'll start with 20. Looks like that's not enough, and 30 might not be enough either, so we'll change it to 40. So that looks pretty good. Uh, we may actually keep going just to create some extra space. Looks like these other buttons have significant space above and below. Uh, let's just double it up to 80. That looks great. 
and we know that our last grid is down here somewhere so that looks pretty good um, okay so remember we're gonna ignore this first and last column just using it for spacing so when we create the button in here this time uh, we'll start with the enter button which is the easiest uh, we're gonna again do text buttons here enter and the text is enter no margin just like that and you can see that it's in column 2 which is the center column uh, we're also going to have a left, right, up, and down. I'll create those real quick. Okay, those are done now just to save us some time again. So the last two steps is going to be creating the slider and a toggle button involving the volume. So again from the control group, this time we're going to choose slider, draw it within the grid space we've got, again delete the margins, and that actually looks pretty good right where it is. And the last piece is a toggle switch for muting. We'll draw that in as well, which is kind of the quickest way to get things done. Get rid of the margins there. Um, that looks pretty good as well. I think I want to move them up a little bit because it's going to be very, very close to the bottom of the screen. The best way to do that is actually just to change the height of the grid that they're controlled in. Remember we set it back to 25. We're going to change it to 50. Uh, and then we'll go back to these controls uh, and stretch them, uh, change their orientation back from the top of that constraint grid to the center. And we'll do the same thing with the toggle switch as well so they line up. And that actually looks pretty good right where it is. Uh, so this is sort of the basic layout we're going to be working with. Later on we can obviously change these to images. Uh, we will have to recreate the button which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, but as far as general layout, I would recommend syncing this to your device at this point making sure uh, that the general layout and flow and everything is good. Uh, later on, we're actually going to add some capabilities below this slider and mute button. My remote has some digits in there, which occasionally we use. Uh, and in order to accompany that, we're just going to make it so that you can just slide up on your device and reach those buttons rather than you know making everything a little bit smaller on the remote to have them all here or putting them on another page, which would be a little more inconvenient. Uh, we're just going to use the great home remote sliding application piece that's in it. Um, so that's all for this video. All of this is ready to go. There's no functionality behind it, uh, but as far as creating your remote, being able to sync it now to your phone, and using grids as layout tools, text buttons to just sort of uh, map things out exactly how you want them. I'll see you in the next one.